watching around the world. This is the moment you've all been waiting for. Let's get straight into the episode. Yeah, we heading for the sun. Shotty got my heart, I ain't tripping for the funds. Yeah, I won't start, I ain't tripping, I'm a stun. Oh. All right, as you know, I need to say something to you that I say to everyone that comes on, but I would not be saying it if it wasn't true. You're sitting here because I find you interesting, and that's because you are an interesting person. I want to learn more about you, how you think, and how you feel, and I love that I have the opportunity to be able to share this experience. So I really appreciate you coming over. Thank you for sitting down. And ladies and gentlemen, the man sitting before me, every action that comes out of him leads in the definition of long black. If you played soccer, I'm sorry that he bashed you up back in the day. But honestly, he's a great friend of mine. He's a great friend of everyone else. He is Aquaman. He is the Long Black, and he's Fishy Boy. This is Joshua Fisher. Thanks, bro. It's mad to be. Did you like that? Did you like yeah, that? Bro, that was good. <laughs> that was really good. Yeah, I was yeah. not expecting that. Eh? You played soccer. I thought about that on the way here. I only just chucked that in randomly. I was not expecting that. Eh? All right, be real. How do you feel right now? Fucking shit and bricks, eh? <laughs> yeah, it's right. so weird, bro. Well, I feel exactly the same way. I'm telling you, I feel just as nervous. I'm excited, but I'm just as nervous as you are. I promise you. All right, I promise yeah. you. So, the nerves will go away pretty quickly, but we'll get into... Um, first, I want to know, did you get any holidays over Christmas or not? No, nah, uh, nah, it worked out like I had my... Was it three-week holiday? Oh, yeah, three weeks? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I come back like... Started December. Okay. Which is like, oh, so you had it before all the boys went on oh. holiday, so it's pretty shit, but <laughs> yeah, that's shit. It is what it is. Yeah. I still get my four days off in that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's all that's right. That's all right. Bro, it's my first time having holidays. Bro, I reckon fucking five years, six really? years. Yeah, well, you always work through. Always work through. I've got four weeks that, too. 30, 31 days. <laughs> that's, yeah. such a, that's ridiculous. Yeah. I can't, when you told me that, bro, I could not believe that you yeah. had that much time. Like oh, that. fuck. It's the best. It's the best. I still got another week, but by the time this podcast comes out, I'll probably be back to work for like two weeks. Yeah. But from today, from me to you, I've still got another week to go. Are you bored of it yet? Nah, honestly, like I met up with some boys from work and played golf the other day and I was I was kind of thinking to myself in the moment, yeah, I would like to get back into it because I do like my job. But every other second of every other day, I'm like, fuck this. Oh, bro, I love having time off. It's so good. Fuck working, bro. It's so shit. <laughs> oh, Work dude. sucks. Dude, I'm able to just do so much more shit, bro. Yeah. So much more shit. You got this as well, which probably keeps you heaps busy. Oh, bro, honestly, this, this keeps me busy enough. But at the same time, surprisingly, it's taken me less and less time. I was just explaining to this before. Like, so say... Per week, if I was to do one episode, I'd have about four or five hours of my week consumed. Six hours. I've still got to find time for everything else. But. That's crazy, bro. You've been doing yeah. that every week. That's every fucked. week. Every week. This week, I've got this week I've got five to record, and then the next week, I've got four to record, I'm pretty sure. So, I'm getting there. I'm catching up. Yeah, can that's going to slow down once you get back to work? Um, no, nah, I'm not going to let it slow down. No. That's why I'm trying to catch up now so I stay in advance. But if I slow down, then I'll be back to square one and I'll yeah. be stressing every single Sunday because fuck, it's stressful when I don't have one. It's, oh, bro. My biggest goal for the year is one episode a week. You've been consistent so far. I don't know. Whereas this is, I said this on the last episode with Nixie, but this will be episode, I said on Nixie's episode, this will be episode 19. It wasn't. It was episode 18. So then this will be episode 21, me and you. Uh, so <laughs> it's getting there. It's That's getting crazy. there. It's getting there. All right. So one of my small goals for the year, as I said, 52 weeks, 52 podcasts. Do you have any goals that you want to do this year? Yeah, buy a house, 100%. This year, yeah. buy a house? Buy a house. Me All right. Jasmine said, I think it was like mid-2021. Yeah, yeah. Mid-2021. Yeah, we set a goal, 2023, we're going to buy a house. Yeah, yeah. And I'd say... Mostly last year, or well, since I started this job, I've really oh. focused on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah I've noticed year. that. You're not really wasting the money anymore, no. No. I used yeah. to just fucking buy what I want when I want. <laughs> Go out all the time. I'm not doing it yeah. anymore. Oh, I'm struggling, bro. I'm struggling not to do it, to be honest with you. But I've got a guy. I've got a very similar goal. Episode one, two, I was saying, fuck buying a house. I'm never going to buy a house. Now it's like, it's pretty much the only thing I'm thinking yeah. of. Every time I pull my card out, any time I want to go out... It's like, fuck, fuck, all right, all right. That's my one goal, bro. Like, every week, checking my bank account, seeing it grow just a little bit. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. this year, that's all I'm focused on. That's mad, that's what mad. Do. Bossy told me, like, he has this thing in his notes where he'll write down, like, goal 50K or whatever it is, and then whatever he saves that week into his account, he'll write down how much he's left. And every week, it's easier and easier for him because now that 
not now, but say the number gets down to like 30K, he's not saving for 50K anymore. He's saving for 30K. Yeah. And I think I might start doing that. How was it for you? Did you do like an automatic transfer or what did you just do? We opened a bank account together, went to the bank together, opened an account, put some money in each, and then we just set an amount mm. and we set it for like Saturday, every single Saturday. That money comes out both of our account into ours. Mm-hmm together but at the same time my account as well I'm oh putting yeah in fucking oh you're putting in extra most of my pay yeah oh yeah that's sick that's sick i set like three four hundred bucks aside mm-hmm. and i probably most weeks i got a decent amount yeah, left yeah. and then say less i moved that <laughs> yeah. straight over to my yeah savings again so yeah that's sick I'm fuck pretty good you give me so many topic topics that i want to get to because i'm curious about you're earning way more money now than you did back oh, in the yeah. day yeah but I'll, I'll go back to as far back as I can from when I met you. And I want to learn from before that. So I didn't know you were in high school. I didn't go to the same high school as you. Did you find yourself to be a good kid or a bad kid, in your opinion? No, I was a pretty shit kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, I sweet. Kid, yeah. Okay, sweet. I was just doing just dumb shit. I didn't give a fuck about school. I hated school. Yeah, yeah. Same, same, same. I can agree. Did you ever get suspended? Anything like that? Expelled? Yeah. Anything like that? Suspended. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just the once. It was a fighting tell. I reckon yeah, it was fighting. fighting. <laughs> yeah. It was actually yeah. at sport, at soccer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was talking with, um, I think it was Jackson the other day. We were talking about soccer or something like that. And I was saying, fuck, I would have loved to play soccer just to fight. And he goes, bro, I'm pretty sure that's the only reason Bishop was playing <laughs> <laughs> no, I loved, but I still do. I love sport. Mm-hmm. Fucking always loved it. Always just wanted to play it. Just yeah. Always outside playing it. But like once I started to become like a teenager, I was just massive pothead. Like yeah, yeah. Quick, way too quick. Pothead for sure. One Best dirty description. tackle, someone cleans me up. I just fucking snap. Her. <laughs> I just want to get him back. You know. Yeah. So yeah, that's. But nah, that's. I did love playing the sport. Mm. I wish I still did, but working in that now it's pretty hard so. well i did notice that this year a few of the boys actually keen to start playing soccer again like yeah. suki was just on a rampage calling people kelvin's gonna start playing jackson might would you consider playing if you had the available option with work yeah for sure we always like especially when we're on the beers we always bring up like oh let's start a team let's do this and i'm always like yeah 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 and then like yeah. I, when I'm fucking sober the next day i think i'm like oh, fuck, it's not really gonna happen is it? <laughs> yeah. i work a lot of weekends mm-hmm. so just like I'm missing every two, three games. It's yeah, just, what's the point? Yeah. Um, we won't talk too much about work yet because I want to get to it, but do you have the flexibility at work to be like, I can't work these days or is it set in schedule? No, it's pretty set. Okay. I have my roster. You can see when I started last year in April, I could see till November this year. Really? Yeah. Wow. Sheesh. So, That's crazy. Yeah. I don't even know when I'm starting next week. <laughs> so, and I yeah. think our next roster is coming out soon, so I'll be able to see another year or two ahead. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. And is it like on your phone? Like, do you get to just yeah. look it up whenever you yeah. want? Oh, so you can plan ahead for fucking just birthdays. Email it to you, yeah, but I just fucking sit open on my emails and find. I just screenshot. Yeah. Whatever. Okay, that's pretty cool. That's pretty yeah. cool. All right, so back in school, you considered yourself to be a shit kid, all right? <laughs> on the same, I also got suspended for just stupid shit. I've got to be honest with you. Actually, I wasn't. Uh, okay, honestly, I wouldn't consider myself to be a shit kid. I'm not going to pat myself as bad as you did. I think I was just stupid, straight up. Yeah. I was just stupid. I was stupid. <laughs> I got expelled twice from this one school. One was because, oh, fuck, this is such a shit story. Basically, we were like 14 or something, maybe 15, and one of the boys was having a party, and everyone's like, oh, I think we just started smoking weed and shit too. And then someone's like, oh, do you reckon you can get ecstasy? And I'm like, oh, most likely. I reckon I could. You know, I just moved schools. I got old mates. Anyway, I'm I'm in the middle of this conversation, and then – the same guy was like, well, we're buying alcohol and shit. And he's like, you owe me 20 bucks for alcohol. But back then, I don't even think I had my own phone. I was using my mum's phone. So I forgot to log out of Facebook on my mum's phone. Oh, no. And she's going through and she's read all these messages. And then, bro, <laughs> she, she went on a rampage oh, of like, no. like chicks nudes. Like she went on a rampage. She went through everything. It was so bad. Anyway, she found this group chat of all the boys. And it was like, fucking let's fucking do pills. Let's fucking smoke weed and shit. She's like... I've got to tell the other boy's mum. So she called them all up and we oh, had a bro. You <laughs> we, were that person. Was, I was that person. <laughs> <laughs> we had to sit around a table at someone's house and like, 
and like uh, me and everyone else were sitting there like yeah yeah we understand we're so we're so silly yeah, we are sorry <laughs> one of the boys he just sat back and was like bro like let us do what we want you know we're fucking 15 <laughs> we're 14 he was probably 14 he's like bro we're grown-ups let us do what we want <laughs> he got us all got us all fucked we all got in so much trouble and then that kid he and because of that one of the boys mums was the head of high school so she thought she'd involve the fucking school oh. And like we all got in so much trouble, I ended up getting expelled. So did some of the other kids. But then I got let back into the school because, oh, why? I think I think some of the other boys got expelled. Had already had a warning for drugs, and I didn't. So they let me back after fighting it. At and then 14. I, at fourteen or fifteen or whatever it was, and then I got expelled again because. Again, I wasn't really doing anything on purpose to get in trouble. But me and my mate found this mad knife in the bush. So we'd like be like, just oh, casual. chuck it here. Yeah, <laughs> like chuck it here. And then the one person, no, I want to chuck it. No, I'll just chuck it, you pussy. And then he'd catch it. And I'll be like, oh, fuck, that looked pretty cool. Chuck it back at me. And he'd chuck it back at me and I'd catch it. Then we go further and further and further. Within 15 minutes, we're on one side of the oval. Fucking oh. <laughs> yeah, bro. We did not even think of it as a bad thing to do. Like, we were just launching this thing as fast as we could across the oval. Oh people God. had to jump. People had to jump out of the way and shit. That was another time I ended up getting expelled. But again, we ended up fighting it. My parents weren't going to put we put their foot down. Like we're paying we're paying too much money for him to go to this school, and there was no teacher on duty that day. So we ended up getting a, a legal action to get back into the school. But. Yeah, as I said, I, I was so stupid. I wasn't. A, I wasn't trying to be a shit kid. Yeah. If you could rearrange your words, were you trying to be a shit kid, or were you just like distracted? What do you reckon yeah, your biggest problem distracted. was? Distracted. So I, I moved to the school I went to in mm. year nine. A new group of mates. Just fucking. Yeah, I don't know. I hated school, so I didn't really. Didn't try. Didn't. I used to like it, like. I don't know, primary school, early high school, and I was just like, fuck this, this yeah. sucks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Dude, I found myself every single afternoon talking to myself, like, I'm going to do good tomorrow, I'm going to do good tomorrow, I'm going to not talk to anyone, I'm going to sit down in class, do my work. Ten minutes, bro, it's all it takes, five minutes. <laughs> yeah, the school goes out the window. <laughs> yeah. five minutes, I remember just fucking... Some, to be honest, sometimes I just end up losing my shit, bro. I'd, I'd even be emotional sometimes because I just couldn't... I could not focus. Every lesson is sent out, every lesson, no matter how hard I convince myself. But yeah, I don't know how we rambled so much about fucking high school. <laughs> all right, but what I was going to get at with you was you ended up... Like dropping out and doing your apprenticeship in carpentry. Yeah, I did. Do you remember yeah. why you chose to do carpentry? Well, I always wanted to leave school at year ten. I was just fuck. I was too lazy, bro. I just I didn't want to organize. You know, I just I was like fuck it. Just, yeah. I was just going to school, monkeying around with all my mates anyway. And yeah. I was like, I was the same. It was mad, just monkeying around with the boys. Yeah. You know, I knew I wasn't going to do <laughs> eleven twelve. And then it got to year twelve, and it got serious. Oh, that's right. You yeah. went to year 12. Yeah, which is Fuck. fucking dumb. I should have just finished or left <laughs> yeah. in year 10. It was a waste of time. You're lucky you're a bit younger. Yeah. To be like younger in year 12, yeah. year 11, whatever. But I got to year 12, but like halfway through, and it was like HSC and like trials and all this shit. And I was like, bro, what the fuck? Everyone's going and <laughs> studying for like four hours a night. I didn't do shit, fucking any of that. I went and went out with my mates straight away. Yeah. Like, we met up by the park and it's like, fuck what all. am I doing? And then yeah. the Nixie actually said, my boss is looking for boys. You want a job? Oh, he hooked, he hooked you up yeah. with that. Yeah. Oh, I do remember he said, that. He come to a trial. It was on like a Wednesday. I'd done like two or three days. And at the end, the boss was like, oh, you want a job? Nice. And I was like, all right, yeah. He's like, all right, come Monday. And I was like, oh, that was it. I was just <laughs> done with school. Yeah, sick. I thought my memory was that um, you worked at different companies and then one of you moved to the other company. But that's not the case, obviously. No, no. So did you always work together or didn't he yeah. leave for a bit? He, no, he... No, I think we were both there the whole time. Okay. He, uh... I thought he went to do, like, fucking, like... Not vacuuming, what was the other... He went to do, like, fucking... Oh, uh, insulation. Roof insulation, yeah. Yeah, he needed more money in there. And we were getting paid shit, so he told his yeah. boss he had some problems and had to go away for a couple of weeks. <laughs> he just went and made some more money and come back. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. What a dickhead. That's mad. That's mad. Do you remember... <clears throat> Because I remember we were kicking back every day at that point yeah. um, when you were in school and then I remember your first day of work. Do you remember what you said to me, the first thing you said after we met up that day after you finished work? Do you remember what you said to me? No. I said to you, how was work? And you're like, bro, 
there's so many things that can kill you at work. <laughs> 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 yeah. I was like, yeah, welcome to the real world, bro. Yeah. That was so good. That was so good, bro. Did you, did you take long? Because did you have any fear in the beginning or was it just like a shock? Did, were you like, fuck, I might get bucked up? No, I don't know. I was, I loved, I was always hands on. I loved okay. it. I, I did like working hard. I think maybe heights a little bit at the start yeah like getting up on the roof and that yeah i wouldn't be able to do that but by the end of it i was like running across the roof i didn't give a fuck you know like <laughs> yeah. sitting on the edge of it and that yeah by the end i was comfortable out like higher shit now probably still would fucking freak get yeah. me a bit yeah, yeah but one by the end of it after a couple months i was right. when nixie was telling me about the two-story houses and shit walking across them my heart was sinking into my asshole dude oh like, bro and you fucking oh. Like wearing steel caps, you trip yeah. and shit all the time. You just like he said, you catch yourself. Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah. there's a few that. moments where you're like, oh shit, like, I nearly <laughs> just fucking died. Yeah, and then straight back to work. I didn't ask him this, but I might as well ask you. When you're at TAFE, were they like, <laughs> were they trying to be like, don't do this, even though it's what you do, and here's some safer options, or were they just like, yeah, it is what's all the safety bullshit. Have yeah, a harness, work from inside the roof. Okay, work off ladders. It's just inconvenient. Yeah, yeah, I know. You it's mean. just fucking get <laughs> yeah. up and get down. You get your yeah. boss screaming at you. Yeah, I know, I know. I probably would be doing the same thing. I was so shocked when he was telling me how cowboy it was, but it's only because my company is just complete opposite. But I fuck if I was fucking a car- carpenter, I guarantee I'd be doing the exact. We're only shit. a small company as well, you know, so we didn't have like all the safety officers and all that bullshit. Yeah, it's just like. Yeah. Oh, fuck. We have safety. Few of us and the boss. Yeah. Yeah. No one gave a shit. Dude, we have people show. I can't remember (laughs) if I said this on here before, but we have like safety officers show up at our jobs randomly at like three o'clock in the morning, 12 o'clock at night, whatever it is. And we've been pretty good. We've actually gotten some good reviews and shit. But if you're doing one thing wrong, they'll write you up. Like I was welding once and I wasn't wearing gloves or safety glasses because I didn't think it was necessary. Anyway, this bloke, like, basically fucking forced me to stop. And I ended up fucking getting the shits at him, this fucking fat fuck. And then he's like, where are your safety glasses? I said, I'm not wearing them. I'm like, they're going to fog up. And he, he's trying to convince me to wear them. So I ended up fucking putting on these safety glasses and fucking burnt something. Fuck, I was fucking, oh, my God, I hate safety advisors. I'm rambling, I'm rambling. <laughs> this one bitch, she's a straight-up bitch. Everyone in the whole, whole industry knows of this lady. I won't say who her name is. But people know when she comes to site, some people, some contracts have like agreements with employees. Like if she comes, put your tools down, do not touch anything until she leaves site. And one time a kid from our company took his work glove off to peel a sticker off something. And she wrote up oh, hazardous dude. work, like shut down the site, all this shit. Because it wasn't part of the terms and conditions or safeties, whatever. Fuck, bro. You're just so it's lucky just, you never had to deal with that. It's sometimes. No. Like it's actually no. not necessarily peeling stickers, but there's times where it's oh. like... Bruh. more dangerous for you tell me about it even the builder on site at the moment he's like all right new rule when they come we ride them out we do not fucking touch we just fucking go for as long as a break as we need and we just ride them out eventually yeah. they'll leave but fuck these safety advisors they get paid i think i think one thousand three hundred dollars to show up to each site because they subcontract and they can do like a couple of day two three a day if they want yeah yes, i'd smash them out if i was making that money <laughs> yeah, I'd, yeah I'd, i would do I'd be showing up and riding. That's probably why the bitch fucking writes up shit. You know what I mean? That way she can like justify why she was there. Charge thirteen hundred bucks. Yeah, I guess I understand why they're doing it, but still, fuck them. Like fucking parking inspectors, those cunts. So you um you completed your apprenticeship. Yeah. Which congratulations. Okay. I I I I give much respect to anyone who completes the skills. And I think it's something that if you didn't do, you'd always be wanting to go back and finish it. Yeah, you know what I mean? Understand. I wasn't leaving until I finished it. Yeah, it was good. It's good. I, uh, yeah, I, I took took me a long time to finish my trade, to be honest. I think I only finished it two years ago and I've been doing it for eight years or something. So it took me a long time. But why did you leave the industry? Did you not like it anymore? No, I loved it. I loved building. Boss was a fuck with Yeah, Nixie, you didn't like it? I was him? listening to him with Nick. He was talking about how great it was. He's a fucking <laughs> dickhead, bro. <laughs> Nixie was a golden child. That's why he fucking. He's a fucking. He's a cunt. All right, he's a fucking asshole. Okay. He's just fucking shit. Everyone like shit. It's so funny. It's so funny. All right, like just you got paid shit. Fucking yell at you all day. Just like I know, like it it gets intense. Everyone yells. Everyone gets cranky. But this is just every day. Oh yeah. Just fucking. He'd keep you back. 
like an hour and a half, sometimes mm. two hours, not pay you. Oh, fuck that. Force you to work weekends. Oh, if you fuck say, that. like, oh, I can't work this Saturday, he'd make you feel like shit for not working, you know? Like, <laughs> you owe me, blah, blah, blah. He's just a dick. Oh. Fuck this. And, like, like I said, I wanted to buy a house. I mm-hmm. couldn't, I was never going to be able to on the money I was on. There's okay. no way. Like, I knew. Even when I you became qualified? Because, yeah. like, you left, yeah. bef- you had the idea to leave before you became qualified, but you knew that it wasn't enough money no. still? Okay. And I knew about this job. Yeah. Time off the money. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That's me. Fuck working. That's yeah. Me. To be honest, when you were telling me about the job, I considered leaving my job. Right? Right. It's taking incredible. It. Like, it's big. It's I say fuck working, but it's big hours. It's big. Mm-hmm. It's a long time at work. But Are you working so more now than you did then? Is it in hours or less? More hours. More hours. Less days. Okay. I was doing six days a week, so I had the Sunday off. Mm-hmm. And now I do four days and I get... Four days off. So yeah, all right. So, I want to know the schedule. So, first of all, you left it, and what's your new role in the new job that you're doing? Just machine operating. Machine paper operating. Mill, yeah. At a paper mill. Michael Scott. So, you're Michael yeah. Scott. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Yeah. So, so look, kind of like a production worker almost, machine operating. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I get you. And why were the hours so intriguing? What is your schedule like? So, it's 12-hour shifts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you do two days and two nights, then you get four days off. Yeah, and that that cycles seven times, and yeah. then you get three weeks off paid. Yeah, fuck off, bro. And then- Every t- I, to be honest, you've told me it like five times, and then I repeat it to other people, and they convince me I'm wrong every single time. It doesn't sound. And then you late. tell me again. I'm like, oh my god, I yeah. knew I was right. That's the most craziest job yeah. ever. It's insane. It's so good. So three weeks off paid. Do you get paid for those same shifts, like four four shifts? Yeah. Oh, man, how does that even happen? And there's always, like, overtime as well. So if I'm bored of sitting at home, I go in and do one shift, and I'm getting paid for five shifts. (laughs) It's it's so good. Oh, my God. That's crazy. Do they they explain to you why they have this system where you have three weeks off? Like, like what the fuck? How would you get so lucky? Why would any company choose to do that? I just think... Maybe because it's shift work and you have a set roster, so you don't get annual leave. So that annual leave is built like, I because I get so much time off. I don't have four weeks holiday. I can take whenever I want. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I have to if I want to go on holiday, I have to plan it in those three week breaks. Yeah, or two week breaks. It 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 swaps. It's three weeks, two weeks, three weeks, back and forth. So yeah. So I think maybe yeah, that, that, that's that's still like from a business perspective. I'm trying to work out why they do that because. All it takes is two rotations, one rotation, three weeks, two weeks, and you've just saved your annual leave for the year anyway. Yeah. You know what I mean? It doesn't make any sense, can I think I worked it out, not including my four days off, just the breaks. I get, like, the same as, like, school holidays, like, 10. What? You know, it's like 11 weeks off. What? Something like that. Oh, my God. See, I get that once every 10 years. <laughs> I get that when I do my long service. And I'm fucking holding that down. I can't wait. I guess that's a bit different, because that's 10 weeks in a row, um, yeah. which could be which will be 14 weeks that year. But I would I would probably... Oh, it's so hard. I always, always wonder. Do you have, like, availability, uh, available options at your company to, for new people to start? Yeah. At there the is. moment, I'd say so, yeah. We've, there's a lot of shifts that are kind of running a bit short. So if the boys that are listening decide they want to jump onto your job, are you the type of person that could hook them up with a spot? Uh, I could try. Put a word I in? I could try, but yeah, we have got a lot of new people starting. It's just whether or not they last. Yeah. Oh, do the people just, not last? No, nah, they just can't. Like, it, it sounds easy, but it's it's hard work and it's fucking, it's hot. Yeah. It's very hot in there. All yeah. The steam and it's, it's, if it's 35 outside, it's probably 50. Oh, like it's, fuck. So basically a sauna session, eh? Yeah. Every day. Oh, you sweat in your ass. Up oh, I mean, what do you get? Do you have to wear like? You have to like, wear, what do you wear? Long, long, long everything. everything. Overalls? Do you wear like overalls? No, just like work pants and then like your typical high vis. Oh yeah. Long sleeve. Yeah, shit. See, for me, it doesn't sound too frightening that whole arrangement of work because the benefits are so big. So I just think to myself, like, why the fuck would anyone quit that job? Can you see yourself doing it for a long period of time? Oh, yeah. Yeah? I'd do it forever. Yeah, I'd sweet. Do. That was going to be a future question I had. Would you do your job now forever? Yeah. And you're saying you would. Is that just because of the money and the and the the freedom, or do you also not mind the work at the same time? I don't mind the work, but it's not like, I don't give a fuck about paper. I'm not, like, passionate about paper. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, the yeah. work's... 
Yeah. So you're more, you're more like Jim than Michael in, in the office. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's just a job. Yeah. But just, yeah, the money and the, the time off is just so good. Do you have the freedom of like headphones or anything like that or no? Uh, you're not supposed to, but okay. like night shift I do. Yeah. You're going to have to grow your hair out, eh? Cover your ears. Uh, no, I was actually thinking about shaving it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just cause skin it? And just fucking, like, you get all shit in it. You're going to go full skin like this? No. No? <laughs> oh, come on. No. <laughs> I, thought, I thought you meant when you said shave it. No. You can do it, bro. Nah, like, I've been on the top short, but... I reckon you look good. Know. I've been saying it for ages, and I, mm-hmm. I, haven't, I haven't done it. Just what about, like, Nyotis? Nyotis doesn't want me to. She doesn't like, no. she doesn't like short hair. No. What about Nyotis's head? He has a pretty good haircut. It's pretty short. No, can you reference it in your head? Maybe, I don't know, bro. I used to have, like, hair like that when I was a kid. Yeah. I'm like a fucking idiot. It's <laughs> me a bit. Yeah. Like, 12 years, my hair was like that. Was really? Like, yeah. Oh, I well. Fucked. Yeah, right. But I hope you do shave your head. No, I just, as well, like, my, my I look at my dad and my uncle and, like, my pop and that, their, their hair's fucked. So I'm scared oh. if I shave it, it's not going to come back. Oh, okay. Know? So I'm trying to just hang on to it for as long as I can. Did they have receding time. hairlines? Is that why? They, yeah, did they that, shave it? just fucking grey. Oh, so it's a matter ball. of time, bro. It's a matter of time for you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty lucky. No one in my family really had that. But you know what I have? I've that fucking... If anyone listening, please let me know. Do you get dry scalp? I get fucking the no, dry scalp, so. bro. Not really. Yeah. Every time the cunt shaves my head, it sucks. It's so embarrassing, kind of. I have to just sit there <clears> and he's shaving and then using the razor and getting smaller and then flakes are just fucking coming off, bro, onto my fucking gown that they make you wear. <laughs> <laughs> and then my, a couple times now, the cunt's gotten the hair dry out to blow it off and it's just gone all over people uh. while they're waiting. <laughs> and I'm just sitting there with a straight face like, oh, fuck. Fuck's sake, bro. So please, someone who's listening, help me out, Logan. Yeah. Well, to be honest, I don't think of you so much different now than you were the, than when I first met you. But you are... You don't think so? Uh, nah, but you are a massive different... I think so. Let me reword that a little bit better. You... To, when I think about it, you're not, you're not any different. You're the same. But realistically, you're a whole different person. Do you notice a difference in yourself in the last, like, five years since I met you? Uh, yes and no. Okay. Like, in my head, I'm probably the same person, but, like, I think maturity-wise and just, like, the decisions and actions I was making. Yeah. Definitely different. No, as, uh, what's the best word I could use to describe you back then? I'm going to say... Oh, spontaneous is, like, a close enough word, but it's more, like, ridiculous, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, I just, I didn't really care. Yeah, like, yeah. About, fucking anything nah you like, and to be honest that's why i got the name the long black bro we yeah. could just be like fisher i wouldn't do it like, fucking <laughs> why not but now probably not like, yeah not really but yeah back then i just went day to day i didn't nah care about it. you don't give a fuck bro i remember <laughs> delwin pouring up this glass bigger than this bro of like just the most putrid alcohol i've ever seen in that my white life thing? yeah no, bro, bro i'm looking at it like i'm gonna vomit looking at it and you just fucking neck down the whole thing and then i was fucked I <laughs> yeah that's out. Right. Was so oh bad. was that the same night you passed out yeah. Remember the time we went punch for punch? No, that was a different night. That was a different, different night. night. Okay. That was weird, bro. That was so strange. Yeah. I've yeah, never I seen know. anything bro, like that in my you're life. You're telling me. <laughs> <laughs> in this mid-conversation, you weren't even affected by the punches and you just collapsed. Right, it was like <laughs> half an hour later. We're playing punch for punch. And then like, yeah. we were all just sitting around talking. Just actually, we were standing. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, I woke up and I was like looking up at the sky <laughs> and like, Everything was so cloudy. Like, I could just see three people, but I thought I'd been, like, kidnapped or something. Oh, yeah, I yeah. I didn't recognise any of you. Didn't know who you were. Wow. And I was like, Fisher, Fisher, you all right? And I was like, bro, what the fuck? And then I woke up, and I was fucking starving, bro. I oh, just, yeah? Like, I've never been that hungry in my life. Oh, yeah. I remember, I th- I remember that. Bro. I remember us being like, we just got to get some food in there. That's bro, all it was. it was so weird. And we weren't drinking. No, nah, no. Nah. smoke, nothing. Nothing. We, we were just hanging around. Yeah, just <laughs> yeah dropped, been delinquents. I've fainted a couple times by memory. I remember one time... One time, this is probably the most recent one, even though it was five, six years ago, I was at Seth's uh, dad's place, Scott. You met Scott before, eh? He's, I think he's, only he's real dad. Yeah. He used to be a good spot to kick back at. Anyway, we sat down on this couch, and I'm not going to say we, I was smoking cones the whole time, <laughs> right? The whole time. And I mean, like, didn't even sleep. I was, I probably watched two or three movies, four movies. Yeah, just laying down, fucking puffing Billy after Billy. Anyway, eventually it got to like 9, 10 o'clock in the morning the next day. And then his fat mum came in and was like, hey, I just got lunch. She's want to have some lunch. And we're both like, oh, fuck yeah, we'll get some lunch. I get up, I walk into the kitchen, I'm staying with his whole family and just 
fucking, bro. I just dropped A. And it was just like, I don't know. I think it must have been because I was sitting still the whole time. And I just got up and just walked straight into the kitchen. As soon as I get in there, bro, it was just... No. <laughs> it was weird. Then they ended up fucking being like, Doctor, you all right? They picked me up. I'm just sitting there. I'm like, bro, what the fuck has happened? And Seth's like, dude, you just fainted. Are you all right? I'm like, yeah, bro, I feel all right. Fainted again, bro. <laughs> Went the other way. Went the other way. And then I had one of those weird moments where I'd like open my eyes and I'm so disorientated. And it, I, Seth reoccurs me this day. This didn't actually happen, but it's like his family were like, get a hold of yourself. You're a fucker. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, fuck, I didn't do anything. Gone. And they're just like, get your shit together, all this shit. And I'm just, and I basically just called an Uber and left straight away. Sorry, sorry. He reckons that never happened. <laughs> yeah, I made it all up in my head. <laughs> yeah. All right. You don't see a big notice in your own mental um, change and you say you can tell for your own decisions, you know, you're not making your responsible decisions anymore. What do you think was the biggest culprit in that decision? Like what life things did you go through? Getting a girlfriend. Getting a girlfriend? I'd thank Jasmine for that. Okay. I, wasn't, I was on a bad path. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I wasn't doing any good and yeah. I can agree with I started that. seeing her and I just, everyone says it. Or has told me it as well that yeah. she's made me a better person. Yeah. Oh yeah, hundred percent. I would say is very true. And you, bro, you found a very good girl. How long have you been together for? This month's five years. Five years. Yeah. Fuck, bro. Every time anyone tells me how long they've been with their missus, it blows my mind. Yeah, flies as well. Yeah. Fuck off. That's crazy. Well, I agree with you when you said you feel like you're on the wrong path, but I don't mean that as a dig personally to you. I yeah. mean. All of us, what, all, what we were all doing oh, yeah. was not going yeah, the right 100%. way. And you see the difference, and I'm, it's sad to see, but you see the people who grew up and you see the people who didn't. You know what I mean? And it's like, fuck it. Oh, it frustrates me a lot. The cunts that haven't woke up to themselves yet. Yeah, me too. So like, they had to learn the hard way, but you did get lucky. You know, you found a good missus. Did she, did she stop you from doing th things, or did you make the decision to stop doing things? No, I think more just I started thinking about her before I done things. Okay, you know? okay. Sometimes it's like obviously those things I did she didn't like, which I then understood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Had to learn the hard way. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah, I just I'd, I'd say I started thinking about how she would feel or mm -hmm. yeah, just stuff like that, you know, and it made me. Yeah, wake up a bit. It definitely helped me when I was in a relationship years and years ago. It was like. It was almost like I had to think about someone else before I got to make my own decisions. And th there's a book, Jordan Peterson, 12 Rules for Life. One of the things in there is it's basically a book on self-improvement, the how to treat yourself as a man. It's aimed at young men, not being fucking discriminative. I know we live in a fucking shit society right now. We have to include everyone. But this book was aimed for men because he is a man. He has the experiences. One of the topics was <clears throat> treat yourself like someone else that you care about. And it falls into exactly what we're talking about. You're thinking about someone else's feelings and then you're applying them to your own life. But if you were able to do that sing as a single man, you'd be just as better off That's as someone. That's a way to think about it. Yeah. I never really thought of that. And it went into detail like, um, say you have a dog or a kid. Most of us don't have kids. So we'll just say an animal or a pet and your pet is sick. You take it to the vet and the vet tells you every day, make sure it eats the right food. You give it this medicine at this time every day and you take it out for exercise. You know that's what your dog needs, yeah. but you also know that's what you need and you don't apply the same mentality to yourself. Fuck, let me shut that up. Yeah, so it's weird and it's funny. It def definitely gave me perspective that book, but you just, you treat other people better than you treat your own self. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's weird. It's very, definitely very weird. And... um. You were very young when you got together, but I'm curious as to how you've made the relationship last because five years is a serious long-term relationship, you know. You're inseparable at this stage. What has been some of the things that have made you so long-lasting? I think we're just good for each other. We're just men for each other, you know. Mm -hmm. We both make each other happy. We care about each other. We look after each other. Okay. So you both put each other first? Yeah. Is that the number we one thing? We arguments, but every couple does. Yeah, yeah, That's for sure. For sure. standard. Like, yeah. If yeah, you're not arguing with your missus, you haven't got a missus, though. No, yeah. but I just, yeah, I don't know, bro. I just think, yeah, what I just said. Just, yeah, just, you're just saying, think. like, you, so you're, you're, you're always thinking about each other's feelings, you're taking that into consideration. Is that, you reckon, you'd be the number one thing that helps you? Yeah. We, mm -hmm. sp we spend a lot of time together, too. See each other, like, a lot, most days. Yeah. So, 
yeah, I don't know. We just enjoy each other's company and just being together and yeah, it's just work. Well, that makes sense. Enjoying each other's company, I guess that probably, to be honest, is probably the most realistic up- outcome, yeah. eh, as to why a couple would last. If you don't like their company, then, like, you're not <laughs> yeah. going to be with them, are you? Yeah, yeah no. <laughs> yeah, no, fuck. I'll, I'll say less. I'll say less. But yeah, as I've been um, single now for, say, what, it's six months, seven months, I don't know how long I've been single for, I'm now in a mindset where I do not want to get back into a relationship, and I've said this before, but I'm so curious into everyone else's relationships. I'm so curious as to what's making them good, what's making them bad, what's making them work. And I do look at you and Jasmine as a good um, example of what a strong relationship should be, honestly. These are a good couple. Um, do you have, like, the same life goals in terms of, say, kids, family, yeah. things like that? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. How many kids are you going to have? I don't know. Maybe two or three. I don't want a massive family. No, I want a massive... Come on, bro. What's up with everyone giving me these fucking boring bro, answers? Oh, kids are expensive, bro. Oh, it's just, just money, it's, come on. I don't have to like, chase around seven kids. <laughs> like that. Yeah. yeah. It's too much. Dude, Jay... Seven crying kids. Oh. Yeah, it'd be nuts. It would be nuts. But I do see these families because I've been going <clears> to the <throat> pools every morning and these... these um, They're usually like... Uh, like like Tongan mums and things like that, yeah. they'll come in with all their kids and there'll be five, six, seven of them sometimes. I'm like, that's, that's, that's how they are. That's what they do. I'm like, that's what I want, Khan. Look at them all, bro. There's yeah. a million of them, bro. It's sick. It's sick. There's Good one going. guy like that at work, Fijian guy, and he's got like six or seven kids. Yeah. And they're all fucking little. Yeah. And he has to work like all the time because he's got so many kids to fucking feed and look up. Like, I don't want to have to bust my ass for seven kids. <laughs> yeah, true. True. Well, what about Jay? He just told me the story. Oh, it's a crazy story, bro. He's like, there's this girl at my work who has, I think he said six kids and she's only 30. Guess how old she was when she had her first kid. Just take a guess and it's young. 14. 11. What? Bro. Bro, 11. 11. I didn't even think that was possible. And like, I'm trying to be sensitive about the topic because... He didn't know the answer and I asked him, was it like a sad story? Was she like taken advantage of or something like that? But from his understanding and the way she was talking about it, she was like, she wasn't like, I was taken advantage of. She could have been, but it was like, it was like her boyfriend or some shit. 11, can't. That's a fifth grader. That's a fucking year five kid. I got a brother that just finished year six and to me, like him having it, that's fucking. Imagine him being a dad with another kid. I I didn't even know that was possible to be honest with you. Does she have parents? Like the parents... Um, put a stop to it or? I'm going to try and not be judgmental, but by the sounds of things, she, she has a new boyfriend now who's in jail for 30 years or something she was saying. So I'm going to guess she didn't have a male role model yeah, in her yeah, life. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> could be wrong, could be wrong, but I'm going to guess that. But fuck me, bro. 11. Oh my and God. she didn't stop. She kept coming. She had another five. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And her current... Boyfriend is in jail for 30 years, isn't even the same original father. <laughs> so, so uh, that's an interesting story. To be honest, I'd love to meet that person. I'd love to have a conversation with him. That'd be, that'd that'd be, be fucking, oh, yeah. 100%. I'd love to see how they think about the whole situation. But that's a story you do not want any girl under the age of 16 to know. No. You know what I mean? No that's way. Just, that's crazy. What age do you and Jazz talk about? What age you want to start having kids and shit like that? Mm. No, I, do you reckon I she'd have a kid now if you if you asked her? Hey, do you reckon she'd have no, a kid now if you asked no, her? No, she's no. not ready. But that surprises me. I thought most. Chicks I don't think it's like she's early. not ready. She couldn't handle it. It's more she just doesn't want to. Mm-hmm. Like she, she has other things she wants to do before kids. And yeah. I'm the same. I don't want a kid right now. Yeah, we both. Like we both want a house. That's like our main focus right now. We're not thinking about. Yeah. Like, it's so yeah. sick that you reckon you can do that in the next, like, this year. That's amazing, That's bro. the goal, anyway. I think yeah. we're on track. We're yeah. definitely able to do it, but... And whereabouts would you want to buy first place? Do you care? Uh, we want to kind of stay around the area. I was thinking around here at the start, and then it fucking flooded a million times. So we're like, <laughs> no, fuck that. But honestly, nah. I gotta, honestly, don't let the floods scare you away. I swear to God, they're not the worst thing in the world. You, there's a, Most of the places above here are above flood level. There's only a few places yeah. that aren't. Well, it's not... I don't think it's turned us off it completely, but... Mm. We don't... I can't, I can't sit here and say we have a set suburb we want to move to, but... but local. Oh, local. So you're not going to try Bathurst or anything, like, further away? So, no. Okay. 
one thing I was going to ask you later on, but I'll get to it now, is where do you have like a dream place you would live? Or are you pretty happy with the area? No, I wouldn't say I have a dream place. Well, what about a question? What about a word like this? Could you see yourself ever moving outside the area? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, not now. I don't want to do it now. Well, I don't know. I want to stay around my family and especially my mates for a while. Yeah, I get As that. we all get older and grow up and start families and everyone's going to obviously stay in touch but drift and... I don't know, man. I don't know. I really don't know if that's the case. I've been trying to work that out a lot lately. Just with um, the fact that people are already buying houses and I know people who buy, who have moved away and it probably won't be the case for everyone, but I feel like some of them are mates who have moved away, hours away. They're not really as happy as they were when they were back here. Oh, really? And when they do come back here, it's like, we've even seen this with some of the other boys, you know, people who have left for a so, certain period of time because they've probably kicked out or whatever. When they come back, it's like they have to catch up. Yeah. They weren't doing much when they were away. And my mates who are away working... Queensland and Western Australia and places like that, they're just not as happy. And I can see that they just want to come back more than anything. Yeah. Well, that's what I mean. Like, while I'm young, I don't want to move away because I want to still, be, like, just be with all my mates and that. But, like, as you get older and start a family and they're your mm. main priority, maybe. But I'm not I'm not set on. I'm not fast. i will probably move to, like, Parramatta. To be honest, if I could move somewhere convenient and have a madhouse that I love with a fucking studio and everything was perfect and I could afford it, I reckon I'd go Parramatta. Because yeah. Parramatta is just central to everything. For me, fuck, I could get guests from the fucking city. I could get guests from fucking anywhere. You know what I mean? Right yeah. now, I'm fucking so limited. I live in the middle of fucking fuck, fuck nowhere, yeah, bro. bro so far. <laughs> I'm so grateful for you boys, you know. He's giving me someone to talk to every week on the potty. It's so good. But if I want to reach out, it's such a stretch. It's like if they do say yes, it's like I'm in I'm in wins. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like like it's over text and I'm like fucking you can tell how nervous I am when I can reading it. Yeah, uh, I wanna I definitely like to have land but one day. Big problem. Yeah. Land. I don't wanna live in none of these fucking shoebox houses. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I wanna have like yeah, I hear, I hear. Like a private space kind of thing, you know. What do you want the land for? Is there anything that you think you need land for? Or do you, just, do you just want the, just want, the, we just yeah, want the just space? The space and yeah. Obviously, would you get a big pool and shit outdoor? Out, lots of, like a big outdoor area where you mostly spend your time? Or are you more of an indoor person? No, I like being outside. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I couldn't answer it. I don't know. Maybe... I think about this shit so much, bro. I'm sorry for asking so many random questions, but it's just because I think about it all the time. I think I'd love land because I want to have, like, archery. I'd, I'd love to have fucking, like, all sorts of shit like <laughs> bro, that, bro. Yeah, nothing like that. Oh, like, I'd have a fucking gun range, bro, like, if I could, you know what I mean? I, I always think that. It's the dream. But I don't see that being a, a option anywhere near here, you know? that's mm. I'd have to move away. I'd have yeah. to just let go of commitments, friends, family, and then just go fucking be a loner, you know what I mean? <laughs> Straight up. And it's like, is it worth it? Nah. Would you ever move to another country? Nah, I don't think so. Yeah, I reckon? I want to travel. Definitely want to travel, but I don't think I'd move. All right, where are your top places you'd like to travel? Just give me like five places you would, you'd like to go. I actually don't know. I reckon like... I can be mad to go to Egypt, see the pyramids. Oh, that's my number one sick. too. That's my number one. I just want to know how they're built. Yeah. I just wish I could go back and see how it was done. Eh? I've been actually researching this thing. Jay told me to look up King Tut. He told me to look yeah, up King yeah, Tut, so I've been yeah, researching yeah. that. Fuck, that right, is mind blowing. He was like eight or nine. Yeah, it's yeah. Nuts, he bro. was. He ended up getting malaria at about fourteen or fifteen. Got really sick. And even from a kid, he didn't really. He was. He was the king, but he had people influencing him yeah. to make decisions and shit. And then he randomly died. People reckon he was poison. But there's a bloke in the recent history who has found his tomb. And fuck, it blew my mind to see the shit they're pulling out of tombs, kind. I thought Egypt was all like just the straight up sand, rock, shit like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. But they're pulling out like actual beds made of gold. Like really? Full on, full on like dolls, fucking boats. I think that even in Egypt, bro, and they've got boats made of gold. And it's like, fuck, they were sophisticated gun. They knew what they were doing. Yeah. I started watching that um, Ancient Apocalypse. Oh, thank fuck, bro. I'm so grateful. I've only watched the first episode. I only okay. started it yesterday. Dude. On my, on my break, but... 
Did you, did you the first episode? I can't remember that. That was the mountain where all the rocks were staggered, yeah, yeah, and then yeah, they were yeah, like, yeah. "Wait a minute, this is, this shows that there was pyramids that been knocked down." Is that what it was? Yeah, yeah. I think a temple that got knocked down. It's just it's crazy, bro. Dude, it gets so much more crazy than that. That's the that's the most minute part of the whole show. Really? The shit that they've discovered, and Graham Hancock, who's a legend, fucking legend. Joe Rogan comes in the show quite a bit too, towards halfway towards the end as well. But oh, I can't wait for you to watch the season finale. Every by episode nine, maybe start of episode ten, you should have an idea of what you think. Because the I won't spoil it for you, but the premise is there was the civilizations before, and why are they not here anymore? So that's why it's called ancient apocalypse. They reckon there was something that removed all the people from Earth. And then towards episode ten, you should have a pretty good understanding. And then if you're even if you don't, your mind's gonna be blown away. You know what I mean? I'm trying not to spoil it, but anyone, please go watch that show. It's fucking so good. Yeah, so good. All right. Um, is there anything else that you're watching at the moment or been looking into? Nah, I don't watch much TV. Eh? Okay. Do you watch like series, YouTube channels, anything like that? Actually, you play COD actually on PlayStation, eh? Yeah, but even that, bro, I haven't, I haven't touched on PlayStation in couple weeks oh yeah just fuck i've been going over otto's house most days playing cod with him <laughs> fuck bro yeah fuck i should just fucking play it on my own house but <laughs> you have it don't you i have it on that thing but it's not downloaded yet <laughs> bro, you should all the boys have it it's mad playing with all the boys uh, the plan is though we're we're not going to live in this house for too much longer i don't think oh but, really yeah we're not going to live here for too much longer so we're gonna have i'm gonna have to move all this shit I'm going to rebuild the whole podcast studio properly. It's not just going to look like a bedroom. It's going to look like a studio. And the desk is going to have to be custom built. And um, I, I think I've said this before on here, but in case I hadn't, in, in the middle, I'm going to build an esky to keep cold drinks all the time. All right. I'm going to buy an ice machine to keep in the room as well so I can just pour it into the esky. There's going to be an Aguilar built underneath. I've drawn all this up with two hoses that come up. This sit just here. So whenever you want, you can just smoke the hookah. And I'm going to keep gonna that running. I'm build it all myself, 100%. I've looked into actually building my own Aguilé too. I've spoken to some people. And they reckon it's just not the best idea. It's not the best idea. You may as well just buy one. Yeah. <laughs> but I thought that would be a good idea. You know where you're going to move to? Nah, I've got no, no idea. To be honest, it's just, I, don't even, I don't care. It's up to my mum. My mum's house, so fucking whatever she wants to do. But yeah, that's the only reason I'm rambling. It's the only reason I haven't plugged in the computer. Because yeah. it's like, I bring it out, I put it down right here. And then I fucking set up the keyboard, the mouse and everything. And then it's like t two days later, I've got to unplug it, move it all, set all this shit back up. I'd rather just leave it there as a fucking ornament, bro. Has it got all the lights and shit? I'll That's plug it in after. I'll show you. It, it's, it's pretty gangster. I'm very happy with it. But I want to start streaming off it too. When I first start playing COD full time, oh, yeah. I'm going to start streaming, yeah, every day. I can't do PC, bro. I've tried it. I'm so shit at it. Well, I I've know got obviously it. you just practice and get better, but I just can't. Well, I've got an Xbox controller for it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even going to bother, bro. I just, I just, bro, you got all these little keys and like, yeah. you just misclick one key with your fingers. You're yeah. not even looking. It's, I can't do it. Right, and then also, I feel like you have to sit at a desk. You know what I mean? You have to be here with the computer right here. Controller, you can be fucking... Five ten meters Just away. On the couch, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I got a smaller screen. I'd probably be pretty close because apparently the frame rate's better on a PC screen than a TV. But you know, it's all fucking. I'll figure it all out as I go. But streaming's definitely something I want to do. Would you ever? Would you ever do anything like that? No, I don't think so. I'm not in the like. I'm not big on being like. On the internet. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, like I barely even post like on Instagram or Facebook. Yeah. I yeah. don't really do any of that. Well, I've got to be honest with you, I didn't fucking post on Instagram and shit either. I only do it now to keep active with yeah. my fucking yeah. uh, podcast. It's the only reason I'm using social media. Other than that, I could not give a fuck. Likes, comments, fucking all this shit means nothing to me. Plus, just... like, all the streamers, bro, they're fucking crazy. Yeah, they're yeah. so good. I'm not that good. Like, oh, who the fuck's going to want to watch me when you can go watch this guy that's fucking twisted? You know? Yeah, yeah. Well, I was thinking maybe incorporating an idea because I want to have my own podcast, solo podcast. And I'd love to be able to just stream something and have me playing games, but also meditate beforehand some things I'd like to get off my chest or talk about, or even things that are in the current. Because the plan for the solo cast is research what's happened through the week, and then at the end of the week, talk about it in the podcast so all the boys can stay educated on what's been happening around the world. Yeah, that's a cool idea. So I figured, what if I do that and stream at the same time? So I live stream it. And then I can save that clip at the end and post that clip on YouTube. And I'm yeah. kind of killing two birds with one stone. Yeah, that's cool. Kill two birds, get stoned. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that's... So you're not watching much shit at all, other than this Ancient Apocalypse show you just started? No, bro, not really, eh? Yeah? Not Is really. that because there's nothing to watch? I go, no, I go through weird phases, like, I'll find a series and I'll pump it out, and then I just won't watch TV for... Yeah. Or Netflix or any of that for fucking ages, and then, like, yeah. like this, he'll tell me about something, then I'll go pump it out, then I just won't... No. I hear. I, to be honest, there's nothing to watch, but I've got to be honest with you, it's fuck all. Other than my million podcast channels I watch, that keeps me entertained enough. There's fuck all going on, bro. I can't, I don't even enjoy the current TV show. Like, I don't enjoy Netflix. I don't enjoy nothing. It's all boring, straight up. It's just all shit. It's just all shit. Like, even like me and Jasmine just want to watch a movie. We'll go on Netflix. We'll be scrolling for fucking hard. It's all shit. And, yeah. Like, we'll find something. After cut, this sucks. You just get to bed. And we just get <laughs> no, we just get tired just fucking trying to find a movie. Yeah. All right. Well, if I could recommend anything, actually, I have some seen them. I did go through a stage like six months ago where I was pumping shit out. Well, the most recent one I watched on Netflix was a thing called Woodstock '99. Have you seen that one? I've seen it on Netflix, like the thing. That's worth a it. watch. Yeah. That's worth a watch because basically Woodstock was a festival that went on in the '60s. That, that was just like hippies, bro. Drug festival, just people. It was just, massive, wasn't it? Oh, massive! One well, of the biggest festivals ever. Just cunts just selling it, giving out acid tabs. Everyone, the whole everyone was <laughs> tripping, bro. Everyone was tripping. It was during the peace movement, towards the end of um, Vietnam War as well. So there was a big fight from war versus peace happening at the same time. The Woodstock was a good place for everyone to just go spread the spread peace. And then thirty years later, nineteen sixty nine was the last Woodstock. I'm pretty sure. 30 years later, in 1999, this team was like, let's do Woodstock again. And fuck, it went downhill, bro. It was like the most fucked up shit for three days. Uh, like, And the peace movement's over. Now we're in the stage of like college parties and fraternities and all this shit. And it was the most fucked up idea that anyone had ever had. I'm telling you, it's definitely worth a watch. Yeah, I'd watch Woodstock. Is it a series or a movie? Just a three-part series. Oh, okay. Pretty much everything I watch is a, is a documentary series, something like that. They are good. I do like documentaries. Yeah. Especially the Netflix Some originals. Get crazy. Yeah. It pulls you in so hard. Have you watched any of the ones on Netflix? Yeah, here and there. I, I couldn't tell you off couldn't the top tell of my you? head, bro. But yeah, I, def- I do watch. Did you watch yeah. The Tinder Swindler? Did you watch that one? <laughs> oh, I'm going to name some and see if you watched them. Don't Fuck With Cats? Yeah, I watched that one. Did you like that yeah, one? Yeah, that was crazy. That was so hectic. <laughs> that was such a good story, bro. Started off as just that guy who killed those cats on a video, and then it ended up he was fucking cutting people up, yeah, emailing bro. them to ministries and fucking politicians and it's shit. Yeah, like everyone just come together to yeah. try and find this one guy. Yeah, it's sick. That's what like, the tennis the window. background of his videos and that. Like, oh, yeah, that's they were like, crazy, bro. They were like, this type of PowerPoint they seen mm. was like, all oh, this vacuum cleaner only sells in this state and yeah, shit like that. That's, that's crazy. Yeah. And then they'd see like the door frame and the door handle and they're like, only a certain amount of towns use these and these places have the contracts for them and shit. Fuck yeah, what a great show. But some people know some random shit, eh? Yeah. Like doorknobs, who the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I watched this other good one called... Um... So everyone listening, definitely check out Don't Fuck With Cats. Definitely watch The Tinder Swindler. And I watched another one, the Woodstock 99. What's the one that I watched before Woodstock 99? It was... Oh, for everyone listening, I had to take a quick pause because I wanted to look this up and tell you... Is... You, Josh Fisher, and everyone else who's listening, some other good ones. There's one called Pepsi Where's My Jet. Oh, bro. Is I it, started that. Yeah. It, it's sad got me onto it. It's, it's okay. I didn't finish it. But it's I got, okay. I, I fell asleep. Yeah, it's okay. It, I, I fell asleep a few times watching it, but it kind of is worth watching towards the end. Basically, a guy who's seen an ad that Pepsi made, and again, probably the 60s or the 80s or some shit, um... He he seen it. The, there was all these prizes. You collect all these drinks, and then to, yeah, it was you like get ten points, like a bottle cap. Or yeah, something. things yeah. like that. And then at the end, there was a silly skit of a fighter jet for seven million points. And this guy worked out this scheme and this system as how to get seven million points. And he ended up suing him, trying to get a private jet. That was a pretty good one. That was a really good one. What um, the fuck are you gonna do with a private jet? Oh, bro. bro. He he was saying towards the end, like. He had these ideas like, do I make carnival rides and take people for fucking trips and sell out seats and shit like that? And then at some point he's like, maybe I'll just sell it because it's valued at like fucking 80 million, 75 million. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That was definitely a good one. I can't remember what it's called, but I will find it. I will put a link in the description. But it was basically about 
Um, the oh, it was about GameStop. Have you heard the story about what happened with GameStop? Do you remember, uh, like a while ago, five years ago, GameStop was fucking worth so much money. The stocks. Did you hear about that? No, I don't think so. Well, basically, it was around the same time as crypto, and people were investing in crypto. Mm. And these people made this app called Robinhood, and you could buy stocks like anyone else. You wouldn't have to go through like the Wolf of Wall Street type people. Yeah, you could do them yourself. And um, basically, these big uh, trust funds, they'd be putting small businesses out of out of pocket, like out of pocket, out of money, and they'd be making them lose all their money and then everyone that invested in that would lose all their money and then these trust funds would gain and these big corporations would get richer and the middle and the poorer class would get poorer so everyone on reddit was like fuck it let's get together and let's fucking try and take down as many of these trust funds as possible so as a company starts to decrease in value these trust funds buy it and then when it's about to go bust somehow they're able to collect all this money so then when they seen that all these trust funds bought it all the people started to be like, now nah, we'll just everyone shoot. Everyone just started investing as much money as they could every week. All of their savings, all their spending. Some people would be able to put thousand dollars in total. Some people are putting hundred thousand dollars in total. But thousands and thousands and thousands of people were doing it, and the stock went from like four dollars a share to fucking three hundred, four hundred dollars a oh, share, yeah. and they started to see these big corporations all close. They were collapsing. I think they collapsed like nine or something of these biggest corporations. And then they were like, fuck yeah, the people are pretty much overthrowing the whole economic state of the of the internet, of everything. And then in the end, one of the biggest trust fund companies that was one of the last ones standing bought the app for Robinhood and they deleted the buy button on, on um, GameStop. So the only thing left was for people to sell. So everyone was like, fuck, can't buy anymore. People just started selling. The stock went all the way back down to nothing. And um, it threw ev- everyone lost money again. The, the corporations won in the end, and the people lost. And it was a story of it was a story of David versus the Goliath. It was really good, really good. But yeah, I would recommend that one. But yeah, sorry for rambling on fucking documentaries, but fuck, I love documentaries. <laughs> yeah, I love documentaries. Oh, I tell you what. I'll skip past some of the other questions that I had written down. I will come back to them. But first, I want to do the the segment, Deep Questions. Bro, I was dreading this, eh? What? Why? What the I'm fuck? I'm good at this shit. I was dreading this part. Well. I ain't good at talking these deep questions and that. All right. Straight up. I'm going to go as deep as I can. When was the last time you cried? Let me think about that. <laughs> Damn. It's actually been a while then. And it doesn't count if you get blind drunk. <laughs> and you're just crying with the boy. I was drunk when I cried, but it wasn't because I was drunk. <laughs> okay. Okay. I remember now. I'm just trying to think about how I would say it. Okay. Uh, I think it was... I hadn't seen my dad for quite a while. We were at his place one night. And I had a lot of stuff going on with my mum. Uh, it's their divorce, they're not together, but it was just like a lot, especially for my younger siblings, my sister. Okay. And, uh, was this a while ago? Was this one? Uh, maybe a year, year and a half. Okay. Maybe. Okay. I don't know, but yeah, something, something happened with her and my dad and she just like, she just spilled everything to him. Oh she shit. didn't want to give like a bad image of our mum to my dad mm-hmm. and she just spilled everything to him yeah shit and she was just in tears and my dad was trying to talk to her and she just like couldn't talk she just wanted me to come in and just like get him out and sort it out yeah shit and then like it just like a lot happened I sat down with him and spoke to him and then like I was fine and then like once I went to bed I just fucking yeah thinking about it and I just cracked yeah started crying a bit but yeah. well honestly Thanks for opening up because, like, that was deep. That yeah, was deep. Was... And I have noticed, like, as I get older as well, it's weird being an adult and dealing with your parents, also being human. Yeah. You know what I mean? When you're a kid, your parents are superheroes, bro. They're robots. Like, you don't think of them as people with emotions and feelings and yeah, shit like that. Right. But it's, even now, at my age, my parents, if they go through things or, like, they're down bad or anything like that, fuck it. Docks you up a bit, eh? Because yeah. it's like the first time you ever have to even deal with it at the same time. It can be a lot. Yeah. As well. Oh, fuck. It's a lot. It's a lot. The last time I cried was 
different than the last time I said I cried on the podcast. It was more recent. Um, it was at Christmas when my my grandfather and my nan split up. My nan divorced him 10 years ago or something like that. And they just, I think they were married maybe 40 something years or something like that. Oh, and wow. she, it was a long, it was, it was pretty crazy. It was, it was a lot for the family to deal with. And he ended up finding someone else and now they're married and the whole, but my nan's out of the picture. She wanted to separate herself. So she did. So it's always been grandpa, I call them grandpa and Beth or Graham and Beth. For some reason I've been calling my grandpa Graham for the last five years. So I call them Graham and Beth because um, she's not my actual nan even though she fills that role. And Christmas is always the extended family now. We have a whole step family and the whole family's changed in the last five years. Yeah. Okay. But then they invited my actual nan to Christmas this year. And oh, bro, wow. I did not know she was coming. The second I seen her, cue the fucking tears, bro. It'd been so long since I'd seen my nan and straight up I love my nan. She's my nan, you know. Yeah. But yeah, that was the last time I cried. That was Do the you last keep time in I contact cried. with her now? I try, I try. And to be honest, we've both been like not but not dirty at each other but i've been saying to myself for the last say i called her a few times two years ago yeah the last two years it's like fuck nan like you could at least fucking reach out you know yeah. fucking feels like they're bitch. Not it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and she's actually thinking the same thing too because we had each other's old numbers oh. <laughs> <laughs> we just realized that at christmas <laughs> so i've been it's a low-key curse now and she's been thinking oh he mustn't want to be a fucking off grandson anymore <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right sweet so that was the last time all right what is the most important thing to you uh, probably just family and friends bro family, family and friends yeah pretty common answer but mm -hmm. without all of them what are you like you're just by yourself you know? yeah like, you need that company and mm -hmm. i think yeah it's a big thing it's something you need i hear i would choose the same thing but i'll try and say something different because you already said that answer i think i would choose patrick said a really good one to me and it was um he said the ability to keep growing because he's like without without the ability to keep growing what am i i'm gonna stay yeah. the same forever and that's a good answer my missus wouldn't want to be with me my friends wouldn't want to hang out with me so fuck you, Patrick, for having such a good answer. I'm going to have to think of something else again. So the most important thing to me would be probably my mental state. My mental state, you know. That's an easy answer. Straight up, easy answer, but... It's important, though. It's so important, bro. It's so important. And it's something that I'm always trying to work on. Do you spend much time thinking about how you think, how you feel, things like that? Yeah, maybe how I think. Uh, same before, I used to be real hot ahead, used to snap, used mm -hmm. to get angry. I still do at times, but yeah, I think I've gotten a lot better at yeah. controlling that. And do you control it, like, on purpose? Are you trying to, like, stop yourself from getting the shit, so you just find that you're just not caring anymore? I think both. Okay. Both. Okay. I still crack the shits, but I just try and mm -hmm. just, just leave it like it gives a fuck. Well, in case anyone else has trouble doing that, what are some things that help you... Like, not fucking lose your shit to the extent. I don't know. I reckon, honestly, probably Jasmine was a big part of that. Okay. Like I said before, thinking before you do things, like, how it would make her feel. And yeah. She doesn't want me fucking clicking or fighting. Or, yeah, know. yeah. Did you, do you I find... Think, sorry to cut you off. I'm just... I have to get these questions out because I can't not know the answer. Do you find... And this is a personal question. Do you find yourself easier to control your temper, say, if you've got an argument with her compared to if you've got an argument with someone else? Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah. I try, I never. Okay. I, I get angry, but I I would say... I'd, oh, I I'd know you would never hit her or anything no, like that. No, I'm not talking like, about I'd, that. Like, I wouldn't... I don't yell at her. I don't... Okay. Know, I just, she, she doesn't deserve that. Like, she's my girlfriend. I'd never do that to her, but... Yeah, sweet. I, I wish I could say the same thing in honesty with every relationship I've been in in the past. I haven't. I've been in some relationships where it's like, I'm at my max, bro, and I just need to fucking scream, to be honest with you. And there was obviously screaming happening on both sides of the, of the argument. Yeah. But I also know, like, it's not how I want to live my life. There's no way I'm going to be in another relationship where I'm getting to the point of losing my shit. No fucking way. 
But I don't think it's healthy either. Like, you it's need not to vent, but I don't think it's you shouldn't be fucking screaming nah. in each other's face, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> nah. Nah. <laughs> Fuck no. And the problem is is I'm so fucking good at at fucking oh, how do I say this? I'm so good at putting my foot down. You know what I mean? I'm I've kind of always ended the argument by fucking getting the shits back. But it's not how I want to live my life. Fuck no. It's so it's bad for yourself, bro, straight up. It's bad on your heart. Yeah. Lately as you know, and all the other boys who are listening probably know, I've had to deal with someone who really, really fucking aggravated me. Someone that we are all cl- uh, been yeah. close to for a long time. Yeah. And I've booked in like therapy sessions and shit like that. And I still haven't gotten to that date of the appointment yet for the sessions. So I've been trying to realize what can I do so when I see this person, it's not on site. Like how do I stop myself from getting that angry? And I had the answer yesterday and I finally fucking realized how to get over it and I forgave him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I had to. I had to let him know I forgive him because it's how I get over it. It's the only way for me to get over it yeah, well, other than okay. punch someone's head in. Yeah, fuck, I fucking wouldn't. No <laughs> fucking chance. Yeah, everyone says everyone has said the same thing, bro. Like, just punch that's, him on, just just punch his fucking that, teeth in. That's, that's but it's not the right answer, dude. It's not the right answer punching someone's head in. It's straight up not. Not necessarily that, but just even like forgiving him, I fucking no way, mate. No way. Well, I just realised like, how else am I going to get over it? I'm I'm not going to get over it. I could, it's a gift, to be honest, that I've done for myself. But it's also I can't lie. Part of me wanted to make sure the other person was still surviving you know what i mean like even though we're not going to be uh communicating i want to know the other person is still doing the best they can possibly be doing but over there i don't want to have anything oh, to do with I don't it know how you do that that's crazy like oh. i respect you for it i think that's massive like, oh. I, thought, the, like oh. I, don't, I don't know how to word it i think that's amazing that you have the ability to do that well like, still give like care that a person that's done something like that to you because i would not give a fuck. Someone did that to me. Well, we, get fucked. to be realistic about it, it's because I have suffered loss of someone very close to me. Yeah. So I know what that feels like. You know what I mean? And it's there is no feeling that can comprehend it. Like to be honest, it's it's so fucking shit that nothing can ever feel as good opposite. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Nothing can. Nothing feels the same. So because I know what it feels like, I can't feel it ever again even for strangers like i have too much i have too much empathy now to be honest with you so one of the reasons was to make sure that never happens again like the other reason was for myself and i do recommend it to anyone else who's trying to get over something just forgive them straight up that's respect bro Mm. that's big that's a big thing to do yeah i don't think i could do it (laughs) yeah you don't reckon i reckon you could i reckon you could yeah, you could, no, bro. No, no. You're already a you're already level of self control is so much different than you were five years ago. I can't imagine you in double this time. I can't imagine you in four times this time. You can't write yourself off too early and say I'm never going to be that, able to do that. I see it being a hundred percent possible. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's funny? When I was really suffering from it, I booked in the therapy sessions and I said, "How long till I can do it?" And they said, "This certain date. <clears throat> this certain date." I test the pop all the time. And then that, they told me the day and I was like, fuck, I'm probably going to feel better by then. <laughs> like, fuck, I'll work it out by then. Yeah. And then the day, the day I was meant to go do it, shit got mixed up with the schedule. So I couldn't do it that day. And then the next day I worked it out on my own. And I was like, I didn't even fucking need this shit. Are <laughs> so you going to go soon? I'm still going to go. You think uh, you use every session? Yeah, I'll try and use every session. I know it's the right thing to do f- for mental health anyway, and I do recommend other people to do it. Not from my own experience, because I hear other people talking about yeah. doing it. Um, but yeah, it's just funny how I, I thought to myself, like, I'm not going to need it by then. <laughs> yeah, all right, that was a good ramble. Would you rather be the life of the party and the funniest person to your friends but suffer from depression or be happy and content but people think you're boring and, un- and unfunny? That is a hard question. I'm going to be honest with you. Do you want me to go first? Yeah. Because you've gone first yeah. for a while. Yeah. Um, realistically, I would rather be the funniest person for all my friends and the life of the party but actually suffer. 
yeah. the depression. Really, I would, I would, even though that's not the right answer. And the other option is to be happy and content, but people think you're boring and funny. What would you think? Well, I think, yeah, like what you said, the first thing, I love making all my mates laugh and just being a yeah. dickhead. But at the same time, yeah. bro, being happy is more important than... I know. It who is gives it, like, at the end of the day, really, you should be, who gives a fuck what other people think? But yeah. then, like... But those people are your friends, yeah. you know? <laughs> are they going to want to be your friend if you're just a boring prick, you know? Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a, a tough point. question. Because that's what would probably make them be your friend because you're the funny yeah, person exactly. of the party. If you're, a bo- as, as it says, boring and unfunny, yeah, no one would probably want to hang out with you. Would you pick the same thing as me or would you pick be happy deep down? Well, if you're happy deep down, you wouldn't, you wouldn't care, need would you, it. If you, yeah. did, if you lost friends, yeah. but... I don't know, bro. Being like the party would be pretty sick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. What is something that you've desired to be but have been afraid at trying because you might fail? I don't think I can answer that. Honestly, I don't think I can. I think I'm pretty happy with it. So you don't think you've ever actually had the fear holding you back from trying anything? If you say no respect, straight up. <laughs> respect. Because I've definitely lived my life in fear for a long time. I don't know, bro. Maybe, like, bored as a teenager, like, wanting to advance and go to the next level. Mm-hmm. Maybe then I was a bit scared to, you know, like go trial or try out and be told you're not good enough. And oh. make it. Maybe, like, stuff like that, yeah. Fuck, I never even thought of having that mindset. Because I never played any team sport in my so life. I always, like, growing up, just wanted to play sport. If I yeah. could do that forever, that'd be fucking amazing. But I think, yeah, yeah trying to get to that next level, I was too scared, Fuck. maybe, to just... Mm. I hear what you're saying. Not make it, you know what I mean? Be told, no, you know, good. So I never did. Yeah. I don't know. That makes sense. I've never even had that thought. Because I said, I've never played any sport, honestly. Never, never. But I guess I can kind of relate in a sense that I'm going to do a boxing fight, so I know I have to bring the heat. I know I have to bring the heat. Plus, I'm going to try and sell out every fucking table in the whole venue with everyone I know. Um, And if I did have the fear of losing, I probably wouldn't do the fight. So you just have to shut that part of you. It can't even allow it to poke its head out. So I can probably... I do understand what you're saying. But the problem is with me is now I'm saying not only everything I think to my friends, I'm saying everything I think to every one of my friends at the same time. <laughs> so people have to hold me accountable <laughs> for what I say. So it's too late. I already have to have this fight. But I was saying originally I was going to do it in six months. And after that big cunt beat the fucking shit out of me, <laughs> <laughs> beat the shit out of me the other day, i got work to do. I've got fucking so much work to do. I thought I was just going to roll in. How long do you reckon you'll push it back? If I can maintain constant training, I probably could do it in six months. Because you got, like, all this is all going on. Like, yeah, I know. it's going to be a challenge when I start work. 100% it is going to be a challenge. Um, but I have to do that fitness challenge before my next fitness challenge. You know what I mean? That's the, no, that's the first one. So the longer I put that off, the longer it's going to take before I can hit the rest yeah. of my goals. Fuck, how sick would that be? But, like, you're in a, you win a fight and, like, a whole crowd's your mates. Yeah. And everyone's yeah. just going off and you're, like, <laughs> in the ring. Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. And for everyone listening, I've been trying to decide what's going to be my walkout song because it's the most oh, important fuck, thing. Bro, I've always thought about that. Like, yeah. when you're watching the UFC and that, and they were yeah. like, bro, what would my song be? And I can <laughs> never pick on. I've yeah. never been able to do it. Well, I've decided what I'm going to do is my walkout song. And because everyone listening is going to be coming to my fight when I do have it, I'll put a link in the description below and I will skip over this section just while I show Fisher this clip. So everyone go down to the description and click on the video called um, Locker Room Chant. That's what I'm going to label it. And let me just show this video to Fisher and then I'll start talking about it again. Yeah, yeah, that's that's it's it's like, like an echo as well. So yeah. Everyone doing it. Bro, right, that's mad. Yeah. Oh, I remember on this thing, I hope you clicked on the video because I just showed Fisher, but everyone's got to turn the fuck up you know what i mean everyone's got to do that (laughs) yeah yeah i think i went off topic a little bit there actually sorry again oh yeah we're talking about being afraid of failure and you reckon it was because of sport do you reckon if you if you didn't have that feeling would you have tried pursued sport any further than you did oh yeah 100 percent 100 percent i love sport bro yeah it's like every week i just could not wait for the weekend to go play yeah was it just soccer or did you play any other sport no, I played cricket as well. Okay. I Fuck, I did never expect you to say cricket. Yeah. It's a weird answer, but I loved it, bro. 
A lot of people find it so fucking boring. To be honest, like they're two of the most boring yeah, sports. Right, when, you play, when you're actually playing them. Yeah. Can you watch it? Can you watch cricket? Oh, Max, yeah. Oh, really? On the TV? Ah. Yeah. Wow. Sounds boring as, but I don't know, bro. Is, is it enjoyable or could you just watch it because you, you've played it? Like, is it like thrilling or anything like that when you watch cricket? Like it is when you watch the NRL? Uh, I don't know if you say thrilling because it's a lot slower paced. Yeah. But yeah, I, I get enjoyment out of it. Okay, yeah, okay. It sounds kind of sad. Like, just nah. watching the cricket, but... <laughs> no, nah, it's good, bro. I like it. Just any, bro, would, nearly any sport, I'll just watch. Oh, like, even like the Olympics is on, bro. I'll just watch like <laughs> yeah. fucking volleyball or some shit. You know? like, yeah, I watch like volleyball, sport, but yeah. fuck, there's some bunda in volleyball. <laughs> <laughs> I watch volleyball. But I have a bugger at work. He's like that too. He'll come in the next day and he'll update everyone on what happened on the, the soccer, the cricket, fuck tennis, the golf tournament, the drag racing, darts, buck pool, bro, he watch yeah. it all. all the right. UFC, boxing, everything, bro. He watch it all. I don't think I can watch fucking sport, bro. The NRL's getting fucking pretty good. I'll watch NRL this year. I can't even watch the UFC, you know, I love fighting, eh? You don't I watch it? I can't watch it, bro. I'm, there's not enough, there's not, not enough going for me. I just... watch it when I can. I don't like, I'm not like diehard. I don't sit and watch it every week, but. Yeah. I do enjoy sitting down, having a few beers, and just watching people beat the shit out of each yeah, other. Yeah. Do you put money on any sport? Do you bet on anything? I used to. Yeah. Not anymore. Not I'm since trying, you girls. Trying to buy a house, bro. Yeah. And I just fucking lose all the time. <laughs> yeah. I never win, so <laughs> yeah. what's the point? Just, yeah, I feel that. I'll never get into the online betting. It's yeah. too dangerous, can't. One time, Nelk, they always promote steak.com. And they convinced me one it time. Looks so fun. They convinced oh, I tried. me. I tried. You can't do I, I did this. I did too, which is I'm so grateful yeah, that I can't. 100%. Oh, it was over. <laughs> it was over. Oh, yeah. so that worked. It was over. All right. This isn't one of the questions, but I did want to ask you this. Do you ever think about what would happen after you die? Yeah, all the time. Yeah. It's one of my, that's one of my biggest fears. One of your biggest fears. Fucking massive. And 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 are you just fearful because you don't know? Yeah. Are it's you... like everything here is just gone. Like, what are you? Like, is that it? Are you yeah. done? Do you go somewhere? Yeah. Do you see all your family again? Like, what what happens? You know, are like, you pushed you know? in any direction? Do you think we're more likely nothing or we're more likely an afterlife? There's got to be something, surely. Yeah. Like, just like a few stories I've heard, you know, and like, oh, I can't remember what they're called, but like, you know, and like, People sit down with someone and they can like talk to spirits and they say like oh like, like mediums and, like, and shit yeah and like they say things that like they couldn't possibly know like shit, yeah I, they shit fucking like that yeah. and like or like they couldn't just fucking make that up you know like yeah someone so maybe I don't know like it's just, but at the same time mediums it's like oh I believe in an afterlife and I believe in all this it all makes so much sense to me but mediums is one of those things where it's like people reckon they're just really good psychologists and they can read someone perfectly. You know what I mean? Like, not read their mind, but based on the way yeah. they're talking, they can feel their emotions and they can, based on hundreds of other people who have had the same experience of, like, a lost mother, a lost father. Yeah. Don't they're... get me wrong. I think a lot of the time they're fucking bullshit. <laughs> yeah. I think, like, yeah. a couple of things. What about there's this guy on Netflix? I think it's Netflix. He interviews, like, celebrities. He'll do, like, Kim Kardashian or some shit, right? Or one of the Kardashians. And he'll... Say, oh, I'm, I'm feeling like a like a Tracy or a Tracy, and it's like, oh my god, how could he possibly know that my auntie Tracy died? It's like, bitch, you're Kim Kardashian. <laughs> <laughs> it would take me one minute on the way over. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I could have driven to your house and worked out what I was gonna say. I'm not even a fucking psychologist. Yeah, yeah like that stuff like that bullshit. Mm-hmm. Once, so, do once, you reckon uh, ghosts or like do you reckon that's a possibility? Yeah. Really? Mm. I think so, yeah. Not necessarily ghosts where you can see them, mm -hmm. but, like, they're in the room. Maybe, yeah. You know, oh, that's like... freaky, can't I? I don't even like thinking about that. I get scared so easily. If ghosts are real, don't you think there would be... Actually, I've said this to someone before. If ghosts were real, don't you think there'd be some evidence? And maybe it really is evidence, and we're just counting it as bullshit. You know what I mean? How much evidence do we need if That's it is the real? Thing, bro. You see all those fucking TikToks and shit all the time. Like, oh, ghost caught on camera. But then yeah. it's like, it could be some dickhead with a piece of string, you know, just yanking <laughs> yeah. on the door. Like, you, yeah. you don't know. Like, that's why, yeah. I guess what you said, we just think it's all bullshit. Yeah. But I think maybe, like, spirits, 
in the sense like spirits i would i would be on like, board with they're here in the room but you can't see them they're not doing anything they're just here mm-hmm. watching you or, i feel you I, I did one time i took acid at a festival right <laughs> one time and um i i don't know it's gonna sound really ridiculous and i know it wasn't 100 percent factual but this is how it felt it felt like i was looking through different dimensions even though i was in in, in the, the same world i'm in now it was like i could see things that i'd never been able to see before and one of the things that happened was a guy grabbed me on the shoulder from behind me and he said to me and he probably didn't even say it i'm probably made it up in my head yeah. but he but it, i heard him say fuck that bro i'm sorry i had to give it to you and then i just felt this overwhelming presence of darkness like oh, fuck that bro, bro no. trust me it gets crazy all right and i'm like oh fuck fuck and it's like it hit me so hard and so quickly that i felt guilty but i just had to touch the person in front of me and the feeling went away and then i watched i i promise you i watched with my eyes this fucking thing travel through the crowd like a dark shadow from the person i touched in front and it just fucking swam through the crowd and then i realized at that moment like maybe there is shit that we aren't fucking seeing that are real spirits other entities presence things like that and there was more that happened that day but that was the most thing most oh, outstanding thing that, bro. And then since that moment, I've been like, oh, there probably is things that we can't see. So spirits make sense. Maybe there's ghosts and things like that, even though I didn't see any ghosts. If someone could prove it, I wouldn't be surprised. If yeah. They'd be like, oh, no way. Like, I'd believe it. I'd believe it. Steve actually tells his story about when he used to take, he used to order, I think, 600 nangs a day or something and do them. 600. He was bad, bad drug so addict. So bad for your brain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, the Jackass boys ended up literally kidnapping him, throwing him in rehab. Now he's been sober for 20 years or whatever. But there was a stage who would be up for days and days and days, like four days on coke doing 600 nangs a day. And he'd be trying to breathe as little oxygen as possible and only survive from nitrous oxide. <laughs> right? And he said that he reckons that by putting your brain in such an induced state, you can see things that you can't see when you're naturally sober and you're almost like on a, working on a different frequency. And he said sometimes people would just walk into his room for his front door, have a conversation with him, pick up his bong, smoke a cone, put it down, and then just walk through the wall and leave. And he reckons he doesn't even think it was a hallucination. He reckons, he reckons he'd able to get down to a frequency that he could now feel and see everything else. And I think about that shit all the time, to be honest with you. <laughs> How crazy would that be? You told me ghosts are still ripping cones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, stealing your fucking body and shit, eh? Scabs, bro. Scabs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. We'll do a few more of these ones. If you could take away one feeling from your life, what feeling would you take away? I'd say, like... I want to say sadness, but then, like, I don't think you just really appreciate being happy. Yeah, that's a good point. So I think maybe, maybe, like, anger. Anger, the yeah. Frustration. Because I think it's, like... Frustration. causes so many problems, like... Mm. Mm. Just think, like, just small shit, like, road rage and, like... Yeah. Just getting out and fucking hitting <laughs> each other and, like... Yeah. All everyone, fights come from frustration. Everyone's always in such a rush and it just like everyone's always got the shit. It's like Yeah, yeah, I hear. That's a good one. And it made sense when you said that. If you took away sadness, happiness wouldn't be as yeah, strong so either. You wouldn't really appreciate it cuz you're always just happy. Yeah. I was thinking like other thing like fear but fear motivates you like um and even anger. <laughs> Fuck more. You need to get a testy pop counter in the bottom <laughs> corner. <laughs> yeah. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Um, even anger, like, it, it shows protection. It, you know, it shows self-value. Shows, self value. shows yeah, a lot of things, true. anger. I don't know. Maybe every feeling's necessary. Maybe it is. Reminds me of a good quote That's I heard. A question. Yeah. I heard a good quote. It was talking about empathy. Because some people don't actually have empathy. And it's not like those people are sociopaths. Apparently, what they reckon is empathy is an output for the input that's trauma. So when you've experienced something and you know what it feels like, now you're able to understand how someone else must be feeling in that moment. So if you've never gone through anything uh, traumatizing in any way, you would never have empathy for someone else. So I love that quote. 
em- a- empathy is the output for the input that's trauma. Yeah. So I was going to say something like trauma, but then you wouldn't have empathy. So I don't reckon there is a feeling that it's I would tough, get rid of. Eh? I think yeah. you do need all of them. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I'd get rid of any of them. Mm. All right, here's a good one. You don't have to say who, but why is your best friend your best friend? It's just a sick cunt. It's just funny. <laughs> it's good to be around. Yeah, it's such a good answer. Such a good answer. I feel like he's just like similar similar version to me. Loves the same shit. Yeah. Yeah. I have so many fucking best friends, I've got to be honest with you. It's so hard for me to choose, but if I was to choose, I would say... Because we make each other laugh so fucking hard. Like, oh my god, we cry, we cry of laughter. It's so good. That'd probably probably be the reason. Also, because it's held the test of time as well. Yeah. I don't reckon you can really gain a best friend without a long period of time either. You know what I mean? Time also helps. I've heard if you if you're friends with someone for seven years. Your friends, you'll be friends forever. Oh yeah. Once you hit that seven year mark, yeah, yeah. you'll just always be friends. If you have, you know, you think like people in school, you know, mm. you know for a couple of years. Yeah. It's no biggie, you know. But if you've yeah. known someone for at least seven, mm-hmm. you're probably gonna care about them forever. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. It brings me to another question I was gonna ask you before, and that's, could you ever see yourself getting involved in any community clubs? Like, a really obvious one that I think you would get in would be, like, a golf social club. I know you'd get involved in that one day. But, like, say fucking... The really obvious ones would be, like, church, like a volunteer community group or any other sport. Can you ever see yourself being part of those type of small communities? I don't know, bro. I'm not... I don't like... Being around people I don't know. You okay. Know? Like, I'm very awkward when yeah. it comes to meeting new people and trying to talk to them. And it takes a long time for me to be comfortable. Yeah. And, like, really, like, set in. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know, bro. Well, I think that's a point of a small community to get out of that feeling. I think that, I think so. I don't really know. I've been reading a book that talks about shit like that, which is, reminds me, have you ever been into reading? Oh, bro. When I was a kid, yeah, I fucking loved it. I used to read all the time. Yeah, Primary yeah. school, start of high school. Yeah, yeah. After that, fuck reading, bro. <laughs> but I used to read all the time. Yeah. I used to read, 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 read. Yeah. Yeah, I fucking couldn't think of anything worse. Really? Oh, I, I take that back. I probably could, but it doesn't, like, I'm not just like, oh, I've got a spare hour. Let me pick up this book and fucking read, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. Well, I've been reading 20 pages a day, all right? And it's been, like, fuck couple days i feel like a monk straight up i feel like a fucking monk i feel like i'm like enlightened like i feel like i'm just a whole new person it's been like fucking two three days you're reading like reading. motivational books and that and like self-help books self-help. Yeah, okay. and i am lying it's been like probably a couple weeks three weeks but i'm probably going to try and read every night and to be honest i thought 20 pages was a fucking lot of fuck jackson said to me at christmas we'll try and read 20 pages a day I said, 20 fucking pages a day. I'd be lucky to read 20 pages a week, cunt. To me, that was such a big number because I've never been interested in reading. But 20 pages a day takes like 10 minutes, bro, 15 minutes. So You'd be surprised once you get into it how quick. Yeah. So I just can't let myself go to sleep now until I've read a book. And I'm curious, like, would you ever consider yourself to be into reading again? Maybe, yeah. Yeah? Maybe, like, I could pick up one book and like it and then be like, let's just keep reading yeah 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 i used to fucking sit and read like 300 page books in a day bro he's like once i'd start i'd just keep going that's going. crazy but i used to love it wow that's crazy in school i was the opposite there was no chance i was reading a book <laughs> no chance and now yeah, i'm the opposite now so yeah I'm like, bro, fucking sack. So yeah. Many other things I could do. <laughs> yeah there is though <laughs> there is so many other things did you find that you were interested in learning in school or not like high school? No, nah, any point, any point during school. I used to love maths. Okay. Maths. Maths I used to focus on. Maths was hectic. And like, I did like maths. Fucking. What about science? Did you like science? Because I loved maths. like the uh, planets and all that kind of shit. And when we started learning that in school. Everything after that, no. I don't know. But no, science is... Like, I liked when you do, like, the physical shit. You'd, like, set shit on fire with the pumps <laughs> yeah. and that. But, like, I 
Yeah. Learning yeah. about like fucking photosynthesis. <laughs> no, bro. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, that's pretty. I don't even tell you what that is anymore. Something <laughs> nah. to do with the plants and the sun. Or <laughs> yeah, like... yeah no, nah, that's all <laughs> shit. You know what I mean? That's all and shit. Cells and all that. Yeah. Well, the question I was leading to was: Have you found yourself to be more interested in learning as an adult or at, when you're in school? Are you no, curious? As an adult. You always you, want to learn as an adult. You find you're pretty curious? Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. If you could learn anything on the spot right now, entire subject, what would it be on? Entire subject? Yeah, like you just you just knew everything that would take a decade to learn. Maybe like stocks and crypto and all oh, that. That's and then I could a great just fucking answer. get rich, bro, you know? Like yeah, just make a... passive... I wish I thought of that answer. (laughs) That's a great answer. Be able to learn how to read it and what's going to do this and that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I'd learn more financial shit. That's a great answer. I was going to say psychology, but... No, I reckon that's good. That'd be a good... Like, being able to read people and shit. Yeah. Yeah, I reckon that'd be Because I've always found myself pretty capable of doing it. I find myself pretty good at doing it. But, um... Fuck, stocks and crypto. Yeah, perfect answer. For sure. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. For sure. Yeah, sick. All right, good answer. Right, we got all to that from why is your best friend your best friend. <laughs> <laughs> but it has led me to something else I wanted to ask you as well. And that was, you mentioned passive income. If you did have passive income and you didn't have to go to work, say it was a comfortable amount of money every week, that would be more than enough for us to be happy with, like four or five grand a week. What do you reckon you'd spend your time doing? Travel. Travel. I definitely want to travel. Great answer. Yeah. Like, like now, yeah. my main goal is a house, mm-hmm. so I have to sacrifice other things. If I want to travel, I'm not going to buy a house. And if I buy a house now, then, you know, you're going to get married, start a family, then comes little kids, you can't travel. So mm-hmm. I definitely want to travel one day, but it's probably going to be later really on the track. Yeah. yeah, I definitely, if I could, travel. Yeah, that's a good answer. My grandparents were good uh, role models for me in that sense, where they worked their ass off. Um, and then now that they're retired and they have their multiple properties and their pensions and all this shit that they're doing, they spend as much time traveling as possible. They've been on like together, grandpa and his wife, probably fucking 30, 40 cruises. Who knows how many cruises they're traveling countries now for the fourth time, fifth time, sixth time. And they're just hitting everything. They're going to, I think they already did go to Antarctica. Antarctica was fucking like, I won't, I'll. I'll cut this off out of, out of the um, podcast. Thousand dollars to go to Antarctica. Yeah, because like you'd have to get like a fucking special plane or something. Yeah, it was all private, all private to go to Antarctica. Wow, that's a yeah. lot of money to go to some fucking. It'd be yeah. a gr- mad experience. Oh, but, great experience! Yeah. Oh, I heard this crazy story about Antarctica. These researchers, Joe Rogan, told this on this flagrant podcast. These researchers went to Antarctica to study. Who knows bacteria? Who knows? And there was on this iceberg, and they see over on a few icebergs away a polar bear. And a polar bear is just sucking them out, jumps into the water, oh, pops up on the next. Them. I remember. Yeah, I've heard <laughs> yeah. that story from you, bro. Yeah. What the it fuck just you grabbed do? this cunt. Oh my God, there's nothing, bro. If, if I was going to Antarctica, I'd come strapped, bro. AK 47, you know what I mean? They look so calm and just like mm-hmm. non aggressive. Have they... you seen one in real life? No. A polar oh. bear? I seen one at a. Like a wildlife thing. Yeah, I think maybe. I think it was Queensland. I want to say I have. I could be full of shit. Okay. I want to say I have. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure Queensland had it. I think that's where I saw a polar bear. But it was slack. This polar bear was in a fucking bedroom looking thing, bro. You know what I mean? Polar bears are meant to be out there searching. It's gone just still in circles. It was so slack. I reckon Antarctica is deadly, bro. Oh, fuck yeah. Sea lions. You die from the cold. Yeah, orcas. freezing. I heard the you polar the bears. Water, you fucking die up yeah, yeah. yeah. I heard polar bears have now become the number one predator. They're actually hunting orcas now. Yeah. Yeah, and that's oh, never what? happened before. They've only recently just started hunting orcas. Like big packs. Yeah. No, no. They just go out on their own. They'd fucking no. swim. Yep. Yeah. No. Yeah. How? I don't know how. I haven't My seen a video of it. <laughs> yeah. But that was latch onto them. Just think about it, if an orca grabs a hold of a polar bear, polar bear's still got all its other limbs. It'd have to get it from the back, and it could just scratch its eyes, you know what I mean? A polar bear's probably going to win against an orca, even though orcas are super fucking cool and super deadly. 
But yeah, polar bears. Videos, they, 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 like they just gang up and like fuck with animals. Yeah. Like, they just like flip them and just <laughs> chuck them on the, the tails and that. They just, play with them. Just to be fuck with. Yeah. Them. I seen one where this seal was like hiding up on this iceberg. And this orc, because they couldn't reach it, so he can't swim around. And the other one like went over to the distance, and then he fucking jumped out of the water and landed on one the opposite part of the iceberg. Used the iceberg to catapult the seal off it, and then the other one was waiting for it, it was going to land and caught the cunt, and then they shared it. That's a scary animal way. It's crazy how they can communicate like that. Yeah, they just make like weird noises and shit. And even to uh, even for an animal to understand the physics behind that is pretty fucking crazy. Yeah. Smart animals, eh? Crazy animal. All right, we'll do two more of these. All right. Is there anything that you've always wanted someone to ask you about? Mm, no, I don't think so. No? Nah? If there's something I want to talk about, I'll probably talk about it. Okay. Okay, that's good. I don't think I'd wait for someone to ask me, really. Yeah. I did hear a quote once that Macklemore has in his song. It said... Ask more questions, talk about yourself less, which makes sense. It's apparently it's a key to being happy, you know, just absorb everyone else's information. But I don't know if I agree with that. As you said, if you were feeling bad about something, you'd probably yeah. get it off your chest or even talk about anything. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to talk about myself all the time. I'm not trying to like everything about me, but if there's something like I really want to talk about, I'm probably going to talk to someone about it. Yeah. Yeah. And do you reckon that's the right thing to do or do you reckon wait for someone to ask? No, I'll talk about it. Talk about it. Sure, talk about it. Yeah, I think something so too. It's gonna make you happy or sad or whatever. Just, just get it. It's it something out. that excites you. Tell people, you know. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I, I, I am naturally that person too, but I have ever since hearing that, I'm trying to be like, do I hold things in or do I fucking let it out? No, nah, I don't it. know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. All right. I'll do one more, so I'll find a good one. Okay. Okay. This is. This answer can change for everyone, but what do you think is the perfect age to get married? I don't think there is one. Okay. I don't think there is a perfect age. Yeah, you're right. You're 100% right. There is no perfect age because it's circumstantial. But what about for you personally? What do you reckon would be the perfect age? 23, 24 maybe. Oh, yeah. God, you're younger. I forgot. How old are you? 21? Oh my god, I keep forgetting that. I'm 24. So when you said 24, I'm like, 23? I'm already that, past that. I think that's just due to my personal experience. You know, if I wasn't in the situation I was in, it would probably change. Yeah. But if we're looking to buy a house, a business, a girlfriend for a long time. Yeah. So it's probably going to come in the next couple of years. Yeah, know? yeah. So She's expecting it. <laughs> She's asking for it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I bet. I bet. Well, it's funny that you say that because some people that ask who are in relationships, they say not before. One person said 32, one person said 33. And then just as long commitment relationships as you're in. Long commitment. I think we have a rule in my family, you can't get married before 27 and you can't have kids before you're married. So for me, it's just an easy answer. It's never it's never going to change. Yeah. It's just a rule. Um, but you reckon... And some of the boys are doing it already. Some of the boys are engaged, getting married. It's crazy. Bro. Like, seeing everything. Everyone around us, like, do stuff like that, buy houses. Jay just had a baby. Uh, fuck Rots, it. Bro. Blows my mind, can't. I'm, I, I talk about it every week, and I still can't wrap my head around it. Like, things are moving so different pace for everyone, you know? It's yeah. fucking mad. It's so cool. So cool. All right, Fish. I really have enjoyed this podcast. I hope the nerves are not here anymore. No, nah, nah. <laughs> but you know what's coming, eh? Yeah. All right. The final question. If someone came to you with some advice because they were feeling depressed because they were feeling lost, what would you say to that person? I would say, I think it's okay to not know what you're doing with your life. You know, it's oh. not, it's not a race. It's, your life's not going to come together overnight. I reckon, I didn't know. Twelve months ago, I didn't know what I was doing in my life, you know. Yeah. But now I've got a goal, buy a house, got a new job. Things are starting to line up a bit, you know. Mm-hmm. But I don't think it's okay to not know what you're doing with your life. You don't have to. It's not a race. You don't have to keep up with everyone else. Everyone moves at different paces. Yeah, dude, I can't believe no one's just had that, and I've never thought about that answer before. <laughs> no one's even had anything close to that. It's okay to not know what yeah. you want to do. Yeah. 
because what is because I guess that's the number one question everyone's worried about what to do and the answer is always find it you know go out there look for it you're like but it's okay it's It'll a perfect answer yeah. line up. everything lines up yeah fuck all right well you fucking really opened my eyes with that answer <laughs> thank you for that it's okay great answer well thank you very much for coming on Fisher thanks bro it's good fun yeah I liked it, so it's, it's good we're gonna do every podcast I do with everyone there's always a pre and then later on in the future there's gonna be a post so I'm keen to see how your mindset's changed once you get your first house all these things maybe you'll be engaged by that time but I do really appreciate you coming giving me your time today yeah, thanks bro thanks for having me alright that's a wrap Charlie catch a vibe I had to put her on bought a two skitter yeah we heading for the sun Charlie got my high I ain't tripping for the fun yeah I won't start I ain't tripping I'm a star